Hi guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be working the trench whacker. I've had this for a year or two. I've basically had this sat in the corner, just gathering dust. I've never had the opportunity to work on it. I've been too busy. So today's the day. We're finally going to pull it out, check it over, replace what needs to be replaced, and hopefully get this thing working again. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, probably should have ordered a new air filter because that is pretty, pretty grim. Should have spark. I think it had spark. I wouldn't have bought an expensive boot if it didn't. So let's put this guy on and turn the lights off. So we got spark, which is nice. Should I check for compression? Right, so throttle. Is this throttle? That's got to be full throttle, I'd imagine. Yeah, because the cable's going back in, sort of going back in. That doesn't look too clever, does it? But yeah, that'd be full throttle. So full throttle. Let's give it a go. We are pretty much spot on 100 psi, so that's that's fine. It's higher than 90, so next step. Normally, I would put some fuel on the top here, put the plug back in, and then give it a pull, and it should work. But this is a whacker. Now, the boot is obviously torn. There is no oil down here. It's completely dry. And the throttle, as you guys can see, that's on full throttle. When you pull the throttle off, the cable isn't actually moving which means the carb is on full it's it's wide open basically so if i was to put fuel on this and start it this would be a full throttle bounce up and down it'll just be it'll be a headache guys so we're not going to do that we need to change the boot we need to fill it full of oil we need to remove this carb this here this is a bing 33 carb i believe a weird system it's you don't have a primer bulb you have this pin and the idea is you push the pin in i think for about 15 20 seconds or so and it fills it up and then you start after that it's quite odd i think that's a choke because that's on the air intake so that must be the choke which is quite difficult to get to uh fuel line is perished is absolutely solid so that needs to be replaced i've obviously got a new fuel filter so i think we can remove the fuel tank the hose and the carb that's probably the next step So I've never actually worked on a, one of these carbs before. So I'm not even too sure how it comes off, but remove this clamp, because we need to get this off first. Let's put up a fight. There you go. So that appears to be the choke. It's actually quite clean inside. There's a bolt here. Is that a nut on the bottom? Right, so I see an 8mm bolt here. So I wonder if that is how it comes off. So that is the bolt for the throttle cable. And that clamp is... Oh, there we go. So... Oops, sorry guys. That is in pretty bad conditions, pretty minging. So let's just unhook that. This is pretty filthy. Do I clean this first or do I just dive in? It's a bit cleaner, but it was it's so it's so thick, it's gonna take a while to clean it off. So we'll strip it down, be easy to clean in bits. So 
that this should come off. There she goes. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is pretty bad. The diaphragm is shot. So I get the gasket off first. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was going to, that's a new one. So basically, this is your diaphragm. And this is what goes up and down and this should be pliable like this but it is solid it is rock hard now i've never seen one wrinkle before that's normally they kind of look okay they can tear but they normally look okay but the click so when you try to push them in now you get like a noticeable click sound from the center obviously water's got into here but there's a vent at the bottom here this hole you see this moves up and down and this will be sealed if there was no hole then this would not be able to move the moisture has probably got in through the hole unfortunately but the diaphragm because it hasn't torn has protected the entire carb so the carb is very impressive that is really nice for an old carb i'm very impressed there must be an idle adjustment screw somewhere just can't see any. Is there anything on there? Look how it's absolutely filthy this. Yeah, there's a screw there. That's your idle screw. So you turn it in and out, and if you turn it in, it gives you more throttle. Turn it out, brings the idle down. One says 64 and the other one says 40 so is that the, the size of the hole let's get this filter removed not bad That's not bad at all. It's out it's probably out by two threads, but should we go in or out? It's probably easy to go out. Basically go out till it's flush. So that is one turn. Probably gonna be two, isn't it? Two is flush. Two's flush. So get a flush, two turns out, in, sorry. And we'll call that done. There'll be a spring on this probably. Yeah. <laughs> this here is what controls the fuel. That's going to the carb. That is controlled by the diaphragm. As I was saying. To prime it, normally you have a prime bulb, but in this situation you push the plunger, which is on here, so you push that plunger in, which then pushes out the back, which pushes down on here, which in turn pushes this down, which lifts the needle, which allows the fuel to go down. And when you release that plunger, the needle shuts down and no more fuel passes through. And when the engine's running, this just regulates itself because of the diaphragm. But this is so clean, I don't even know if this is going to be required to be removed. Let's have a look, just for curiosity. No, that, that looks brand new. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. I mean, I'll leave it out for the clean. There's a spring as well. So I think the next step is to clean all this gunk off. I'll just use a screwdriver, get the thick off, and I think we'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bath, and I will order a diaphragm and get that fitted, and then we can call this done. We can't really fully rotate. You could do a 360, and that is because the boot itself is completely torn. 
Now, this is the way it should face. The side glass at the rear here, for the operator, who will be standing there. You want to make sure this is perfectly in line with this. <sighs> There's probably some tool you can use, but I think this isn't bashed up. This is straight. This looks to be square. So, if I put this on the ground, this part here, flat on the ground, this is nice and straight. With this nice and straight on the ground also, I think that should be enough to line it all up. We need to remove this and this, and I believe these four bolts here. That should bring this down, and there should be somewhere to disconnect this from the top end inside here. Let's remove this one first. Nope. <sighs> the bolts are out, so now it's just a case, well I say just a case, of getting this down. Now, is this going to come easily or is it going to put up a fight? Is going to put up a fight. Right, so is it a case of removing that circle and knocking the pin through? Is that how this guy comes off? So I've used the ratchet strap to release the pressure, the tension off this, which then reveals this circlip. So I'm going to remove that circlip and see if I can push that pin up from the bottom. If not, I'll have to remove the circlip on the other side as well. And hopefully that will release the rod, which in turn will allow this to become separate to the top. Uh, basically, I've left the circlip on this side. This is the back side. So once the boot is back on, we will put it back on like this with a flat side here facing up. Align the rod through and put the pin through, washer, then circlip. I had to kind of push this up by also pushing something small through the center of the washer through this hole here to put pressure on the pin to put the pin out. Now, the pin would not come out because it was at an angle. You had to get this perfectly straight. Once it was perfectly straight, the pin just came straight out. I think an easy way to do this, oddly enough, would be two people. And I think if you had one person basically holding the top, kind of hold it off the ground, this, obviously the weight of it will pull it down, and another guy comes across and pushes the pin out, the bottom should just drop off. Now that's probably the easiest way to do it, but I'm by myself, so... <laughs> Had to struggle but we got it off so next step is to remove this top end then this boot what's left of it should just come straight off Thank <laughs> you. 
So we've cleaned the bottom end, we've cleaned the top end. I've removed all the debris. There was loads of bits of rubber and stuff in the bottom of the actual boot that's broken down. It was obviously contaminated with water and it needed to come out. So it's all nice and clean, ready for fresh oil. So the next step is to install the boot. Now, there's probably a process to do this. I do not know the process. I probably could look it up, but I thought I'll try my own method first. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some grease on this lip here. Not much, just a tiny bit, just to help it get off that lip because it has to get past this lip and then sit down into here. So a bit of grease on there, a bit of grease on here. And then I'll dunk this guy in the hot water, both sides. And hopefully it should, <laughs> it should just slide on. So the boot is on and the straps are on. They're just on loose. They're not on tightened down yet because this is how you adjust the angle of the foot. Well, let's just go straight in this time. Nope. So let's move this around. So get your washer, it's very important. This guy here. It's not needed, but I've cleaned it up. I do have a bit of grease on it, so that should help a little bit. Yeah, it's time to go down. So let's remove this. And this should, <laughs> should. Right, so I would say that is pretty straight. So let's put this back on. Right, so back working on this. Basically, I've been pulled away. A friend of mine has just been told he can collect his skyline. So it's been in the body shop for the best part of 2020. It's fully finished. Looks absolutely unbelievable. Much better than I expected. It It's a stunning looking car. It'll be on the channel at some point. But uh, for now, let's get back to this. So the boot is installed. These are being tightened down. Next step is some oil. Now, I'm not too sure which oil goes in this. You can probably just put any generic 530, I guess. But I've got some 30 weight oil. That should be perfectly fine for this. So I think these indications here, I think that's the low and that's probably the max, which is the top of the side glass. So I guess put some oil in, fill it up to the top of the side glass, 
if we can call this bit done. Oh god, it's uh, tighter than I expected. A 10 mil hex, I guess. And let's get some fresh oil in this guy. So I've just got some 40, it's basically 30 with oil. So basically what you put in your lawnmowers, this should be okay. I would say that's about right. With the whacker on the floor, leaning forward, it is just there. You can just make it out at the bottom. When you straighten the whacker up, which is about here, you see the oil? It's moving around, so when the whacker's straight, it's almost at the top. So, I would assume that's correct. I should really look online and uh, see what they recommend, but I like to learn things as I go, so we'll continue. We'll call that bit done. The foot is basically new, so that's fine. We have oil in the base. We have a new boot and the rings are on. So, the carb is getting cleaned and we need a diaphragm for that. So the next step is probably the fuel system. So the fuel tank is, it's actually in pretty decent shape. It's plastic, well, it's something. I'm not quite sure, I think it's plastic, but it's not metal, so there's no rust, which is nice. The tap seems to be in okay condition. <laughs> the fuel hose is not. The fuel hose is solid, so we need new fuel hose and a new filter. But I think first, let's have a look inside of here. And it's like a tar <laughs> at the bottom, which is expected because two stroke fuel. The fuel has evaporated. Yeah, the fuel has evaporated and has left the two stroke oil. So now we need to try and clean that out somehow. Can't even get that off, but it's, it's not tight. As you can see, it's moving around, but. So let's get this guy off, 25, oh, it's tight, alright I thought it was a rare, sometimes you got to release the nut and then you can actually turn the tap, but I was going to break it then. There's probably a screen on this, I would have thought. Yep, that is disgusting. That is... Can you see it's just like a... Like a maple syrup. It's, it's just oil, basically. And a bit of grit. So... What was the purpose of this? Because that looks like it's not doing anything. Yep, that's not doing nothing. That's just attaching the threaded part inside the tank. The tank is sealed. If I undo this nut, that might fall inside and I won't get it back on. So let's just leave that, shall we? So these have been in for about 20 minutes. So let's take the carb out and see how clean it is. So it's a following weekend, this is the old gasket and the new one has just came in this morning so I figured let's get this car back together, get it back on the machine and be one step closer to getting this thing running once more. So first let's get the jets back in. I looked online and it would appear that the 64 goes in the HD and the 40 jet goes into the LD. So we'll put these back in. Make sure you put the washer on, the shorter of the two goes in the HD and the longer one in the LD. 
So next we'll put the needle and seat back in. So spring, see the needle. The all important gasket. You want this side down and it is keyed. So there's a notch there and a notch at the top of there. So just line it up with that. Gasket goes on after the diaphragm. If you put the gasket on first and then put the diaphragm on top, it will create too much of a gap between the needle and seat and this pin here. Now it's keyed, so it can only go one way. I would probably like to have that more at the bottom for drainage. So if any moisture did get in, at least it would drain out to this level. But if for some reason it's keyed and it only goes that way, so that, that should be okay. And the fuel filter just goes in like so. And then get your cover. Now which way did this point? So it's on the machine like this. So I'm guessing that'll have to point outwards like so. Put your washer on. This is the new fuel line that I'm going to be using. So just put that on there like so. And if we blow it into here, we get nothing. Push this in. That's working perfectly fine. The last thing is the idle adjustment screw. So we'll just screw that back in place. Flush with the front. Which looks to be about there. Then we'll do two turns. Which is about there. We can just that, that's fine. If it's bogging down or cutting out on idle, we'll just screw this in basically so the cab picks up the fuel and runs it at an idle. So I think that's it guys. That's one rebuilt cab. Since last weekend, I've cleaned this up. It looks pretty rough, but it's clean. As you can see, it's nice and clean inside. Almost brand new inside. Outside looks a bit scruffy, but it's cleaned up the best I can. So that is ready to go back on. The air filter still needs to be blown out with some compressed air, but we'll do that later on. Got the spark plug, the fuel tap is all cleaned up. Mm -hmm. You can see straight through that now. Nice and clear. Clean the fuel cap up a little bit. Cleaned up this, we need to shoot some WD-40 or some oil down this just to give it a bit less resistance because it's quite, it's, when you release the cable, it does bind up a little bit at the bottom here, as you can see. The diaphragm is now junk. We have new fuel line and obviously a new fuel filter because we are not putting this back on. Fuel line should not look like that. Fuel line should be more, like this. Took it outside and used some detergent and a heated pressure washer and got all the thick grime and dirt off. As you can see the foot is very clean, the boot obviously brand new. This cleaned up quite nicely, it is by no means perfect but there's no oil or anything on it anymore. The fins back here, they're all gummed up, that's not good, this is air cooled and if these are all gummed up it'll overheat. So they're nice and clear now. You can even see a sticker on the back which we couldn't before. Had this set up the other night because I was checking to make sure that the kill switch was still working. Basically there's a switch down here when you push this in it quite simply grounds out the plug which cuts the engine off. Now I couldn't see this before it was too much dirt and grime but I tested it the other day and that works perfectly fine. It was difficult to get anything in there really deep enough to actually clean all the dirt and grime off so I used a nylon brush because I got the thick off and then moved on to a brass brush Basically, put it in and out, had a drill attached, in and out a few times, and cleaned up nice and clean. So I'm going to screw these all back in. Don't need to see me doing that. Just a couple of bolts at the top here. 
run the fuel line to the carb, put the carb back on, get it reassembled, and I'll bring you guys back when it's done. So I think it's been installed. We have the fuel tank, the fuel tap, the new hose with the inline filter, which isn't really needed because it has got a filter, but better be safe than sorry, really, especially if something that's used on a site. So inline filter, the carb is back on and pretty much ready to go. So that is kind of idle, I believe. That's probably start position and that will be full throttle. So if we come down here, we are full throttle and that is idle. So hopefully that should be okay. The cap seems fine, but this is all chewed up. And when you put the cap on, it feels kind of in place, but I just don't trust this. I think this may leak. So I made of some 50 to one. Basically you fill your fuel to here, then add the oil to the 50 to one mark. So let's put this guy in the fuel tank. So we have fuel, so let's turn the fuel on and prime. I can already hear the fuel going into the actual carb itself. I don't press it for too long because the fuel will come in, fill up and then come out the intake. So I think we should be good to go. Right, so I think we can wrap this guy up. I have adjusted the idle screw here. It was just basically it was cutting off when you put this lever down, which isn't ideal. So I've just run it in one turn and that seems to be okay. The throttle cable itself, which comes into here, this wasn't actually gripping. So I just took the throttle cable out, nipped this up and then screwed it back in. That's nice and firm and it isn't going anywhere. Topped up the oil. It, was, it wasn't it was low, but it did drop a little bit. So topped it back up so it's nice and full. And I think that is it guys. So I think that's about all we can do on this. It's ready for work basically. So I think we'll call this one here. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy the content. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one.